Hi, I want to speak a little bit about luminosity, temperatures, and sizes of stars. But first, I'd like to look at the electromagnetic spectrum, which is the spectrum of light that we see going all the way from the highest energy gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet, and then the visible light to lower energy infrared and radio waves. Uh, the part of the spectrum that we see is actually very narrow and it covers the colors from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And it's not a coincidence that the light that the human eye is able to detect is very similar to the sun's emission of light. If we think about what we uh, mean by the colors, what we want to think about is the process of taking a beam of white light and putting it into a prism or a similar device and breaking it up into the colors. And we see that the violet or purple light is bent more as it goes through the prism and the yellow light is less, the red light is the least. And so because of that bending, the different colors come out in different directions and we see the rainbow of colors, which is known as the spectrum of visible light. But this doesn't pertain just to visible light, it pertains to the full electromagnetic spectrum. Now if we look at stars, star colors range from bright blue hot stars to red cool stars. And the, uh, what you'll notice here is that many stars appear white and that is because they are emitting all over the spectrum, that they, across the spectrum, stars are emitting blue and yellow and red and, and the um, electromagnetic spectrum. However, if stars are peaking kind of in the region of the green or yellow part of the spectrum, there's still a lot of red light and a lot of uh, blue light in that spectrum. So the appearance is mostly red or uh, sorry, mostly yellow or a little bit yellowish white. If the stars are really hot, then they don't have much red light at all. They appear very blue. If the stars are very cool, comparatively, they don't have as much blue light. They have red light and yellow light, not so much blue light, and they appear red or orange. The Stefan Boltzmann law is a law that sh shows us how the energy flux from any object at a temperature that is considered a black body will, uh, which means that it absorbs efficiently and emits efficiently and absorbs as much light as it emits. And stars follow this principle very well and the way this works is the brightness is a constant called the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the temperature to the fourth power. This is a very strong function of the temperature. So as the temperature increases, here is a star of 3,500 Kelvin, 4,000, 4,500, 5,000, and 5,500. Only a little bit of increase in temperature corresponds to a dramatic change in brightness. This is because of the fourth power there. Now, if we want to look at the sun and look at the spectrum of the sun, we can see that the black body curve, which is the dark line here, which is the theoretical temperature, uh, a spectrum of the sun based on its temperature, is close to, but not exactly, along the lines of the sun. For the, the sunlight in yellow here without the atmosphere is shown here, and it, it corresponds fairly well, but not exactly to the black body. And then we have the red, which is 
what the atmosphere of the Earth is absorbing. So the uh, water in the Earth's atmosphere, carbon dioxide and oxygen is absorbing light from the sun and that's why uh, a lot of that is not getting through to the ground. Now if we consider uh, the luminosity, again which is the total amount of energy emitted from a star, it's the area times the flux of light coming from the surface. The surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, where r is the radius of the sphere. So thinking back to the Stefan Boltzmann law, sigma t to the fourth, which is the flux, times the area, 4 pi r squared, gives us the luminosity of the star. And we can use this to uh, say a lot about the stars just based on their temperature. For example, if we have a 12,000 degree star, it appears kind of blue, and a 4,000 degree star appearing kind of red, the temperature of this star is three times the temperature of that star, but they're the same size. But when I consider the luminosity, which would be the ratio of the temperatures to the fourth power, that three times becomes three to the fourth power, or 81. The blue star is 81 times brighter than the red one. Another example, if we have two stars that have the same temperature, here they both have the same temperature as the red one in the previous example, 4,000 degrees. But the temperature doesn't matter here because they're the same. But this one is three times the radius of that one. That means there's more surface emitting the light at the same temperature. So this one will be brighter. And this will go as the square of the uh, ratio of the radii. Radius 1 over radius 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So this big star is 9 times brighter than the small one. Another example, if we consider the blue star here and the red star here, three times hotter, T1 compared to T2, and in addition, the blue star is also three times bigger. So we have to consider the Stefan Boltzmann law, the radius squared and the temperature to the fourth power. So that's three squared times 3 to the 4th power, and that gives us 729. So the big blue star is 729 times brighter than the small one. So this gives us the Stefan Boltzmann law, which is a way that uh, we can connect the concepts of luminosity, the total energy emitted from the star, the radius of the star, describing its size, and the temperature of the star, which are related by the luminosity is 4 pi r squared sigma t to the fourth power. Sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. But in the examples we've used here, it wasn't needed because we were just considering the uh, comparison of one star to another. So that is the uh, summary of the sizes of stars and the connection to the luminosity and the temperature.